G'day everybody, welcome back to In My Shed, I'm BC. Another episode on tool and cutter accessories and operation. Hope to keep you interested this week. I realised that from one of the comments coming back from a writer that he hadn't seen the attachment in operation and I seem to forget that not everybody is familiar with tool and cutter grinding. And so I decided to do an operational video on four facet grinding later on today and zoom in on a few more attachments to try and keep your attention. Uh, some of the comments are asking for things like uh, sharpening side and face cutters, which I don't find really uh, common nowadays, so that would be a few we are setting up for not a really common procedure. There's a lot out there already on doing side and face cutters and a lot on how not to do it. So you can search out YouTube, it's a good resource there. I can only do videos on what I can quickly set up and put into my working day. So I'll zoom in on a couple of grinders that I've purchased, mount that attachment back up on the grinder and get a video going on grinding a larger four facet drill. There's been quite a bit written on procedures, how you should do it and how you shouldn't. Uh, I'll explain some of that as we get there. Okay, on to the next segment. Here's one of the old dinosaurs I've collected over the years. It's a Brobo wall down raised carbide tool grinder. The wheel on the right is a coarse aluminium oxide wheel to grind the steel backing away. And you really have to do that because if you're grinding on the diamond wheel, the mild steel can tend to load the wheel up. On the left hand side it has a diamond wheel that's worth about four times as much as I paid for the grinder. A very solid tilting table, you can put a sliding fence in that. And the tilt on the table even has an adjustable stop. Overall, very, very well built. Most of my work is not flat out industrial work, so it doesn't matter if I go slow and I really like braised carbide tools. You can bring them up to a very sharp edge, take fine finishing cuts with them, uh, turn some horrible materials that high speed steel doesn't like. Very good website, Diamond DD Industrial Precision, I think, and he shows how sharpening up a braised carbide tool correctly can decrease deflection on turning below two tenths of a thou. That guy is a very experienced toolmaker, and what he shows on his jig borer and he's very good American lathes. Um, it's very educational. He's got an unusual sense of humour, but I can really suggest you get there. And if I remember, I'll put a link to his site further on in the video. Uh, these old tools are starting to get very expensive now because you, the bloody hobbyists, are putting the price up. I think I paid all of about $400 for this. But they built like a proverbial brick dunny. A great big shaft, probably one inch shaft in there, good bearings. They run very smooth if the wheels are dressed up well and represent good value for money. So keep your eye out on auctions for some of the bigger, older shops. You might still get something like this. Look at the switch on top. Okay, we'll set the four facet grinder up now. Well, here I am indicating in the table to the wheel and I'll show you the pivot point later on. And it's simply tilting the table from side to side until I get a reading close to zero along there. It's very close at the moment, would do for the work, but I might try and get it a little better. Okay, just a handmade parallel being held across the front of the wheel. And the reason I'm having to do that is the Clarkson table mechanism sits on a subplate that pivots around that bolt. And of all stupid things, the factory didn't put dowel pin holes at the 90 degree increments. So you've got to clock it in every time to get it correct. So I'll take you back out and you'll get a bit better perspective on where that is. There are the subplate down the bottom is what pivots. This is the lower table and the upper table that you can swivel. So I'm clocking that in using the dial indicator to get this table movement parallel with the outer face of the wheel. Okay, fellas, now a little bit more on the setup. There's no genius here whatsoever, just straight mathematics. I've got the table parallel using the dial indicator for the face of the wheel. I then set the jig to the table with the sheet metal worker's protractor. That's very easy to do. Make Betty Base Clino to get 25 degree secondary clearance angle. And a little bubble level to make sure the cutting edge is horizontal if it's held against the stop. 
So it's a bit of a rough setup. I might be one or two degrees out, but I'm pretty sure that this will be on the money. So I'll have a bit of a practice run and bring you back in with machine running. Okay guys, you can hear me now, but when the machine's on you may not. Uh, I've got a lot of material to take off this, so I'll run a couple of wipes past and then pass you through to when we get the primaries done. This is going in the secondaries at 25 degrees. Sorry about the noise of the machines, but I have no way to muffle them. Off we go. Just feeding in about a thousand and a half per part. The next time I rotate the drill around to the stop on the floor. You can see there's a bit of a land forming on the back of the heel here. So I'll turn the camera off so I don't bore you and bring you back when we're ready for the climbing. Back again. That's as close as I can get with the secondaries. It's going to be hard work holding that big drill in the jig. Uh, the first grinding wheel I tried was the one I took off the other tool and cut a grinder. And I should not have tried it. It's still a piece of shit as it was before. Now I've left the primaries to do with the reset up, which I'll do shortly. I thought I'd show you this. There's the delineation between the secondary, which is as hot as hell, and the old primary. And I realise now that this is a drill I've done a bit of practice on and it's got web thinning, so I don't know whether that will interfere with the final product. But I'll change it up for a 10 or 12 degree primary now and set up again, bring you back. Well, there's the end of the drill after splitting the point. It's a reasonable job. Uh, very hard to light, I can't get focus up any closer than that. I've got to say that this little Clarkson, I'll take my spear light away, this little Clarkson is not really rigid and it's not just a worker blaming his tools. It does a lovely job on the primary facet when you've got a very thin area to grind, but when you're grinding a land that's about 5 eighths of an inch by half inch, you just start to get a little bit of a chatter. And I think it comes down to a lot of things. The um, Platen that the table sits on is only clamped down by that middle bolt, so that, that doesn't give it much rigidity. It's a very big attachment, can't leave it off the table. And I found with my indexing uh, finger, if I don't choke that up close to the table, just the weight of that makes the table chatter. So there's a lot of forces involved. I'd like to try it with a nice sharp CBN wheel to see if they get any difference. But the uh, principle of it works and I'm very, very happy with how parallel the primary facet is. Uh, for about three quarters of the way, it's a nice parallel facet. I had to give it another lick as I hadn't taken quite all of the primary clearance from before out of it. But now happy with the process. Uh, the jig performed reasonably well and with a simple magnetic clino and a bubble level and a protractor. It's easy to set up on the table. I think this principle would be very, very good on a Warden tool and cutter grinder for smaller drills. And I'll send the link in the comments to a video. Uh, Graham managed to find the original German brochure for the drill grinder I put up last week. And the German brochure is very good. It gives a much better detailed look at the facets of it. But there we are. We actually use the attachment. I think 80% success. I think it works reasonably well. With the pivot point so close to the front of the drill, there's not a lot of chatter there. 
and you don't change the height as much when you change the angle of the drill. However, this setup is a little bit light and dodgy. And I also noticed that I changed out that horrible hard wheel and the new Norton wheel has the inside of the wheel dressed at about 30 degrees and the actual grinding surface is only about 4 millimetres wide. So that's a little bit of a secret. Keep the grinding face very narrow to reduce the number of points creating pushback force against your grinding work. Okay, if you think it's good, please like and subscribe. I'll put this up into a video.